action. Okay, so this is how I have to put my shoes on. And normally I don't wear shoes because I they don't fit. And it takes me forever to put them on. And it's... So, here we have my shoe. And it's already tied. And it's loosely tied because I can't get my foot in there. <laughs> Tying it is completely... Now the little thingy is stuck in the... <laughs> oh, that's a lot easier without socks. <laughs> I woke up and I was 250 pounds. I said, holy Christ, you is fat. And I was like, I can't be fat, so I wanted to go walk. So I tried to put my walking shoes on. I put one shoe on my foot, and I reached down, and I tried to tie that bad boy, right? And halfway through trying to tie my shoe, I almost suffocated. I couldn't breathe. My fat was, like, pushing up against my lungs, and I was breathing all heavy. I almost passed out trying to tie my shoe. I said, shit, man. What happens when you can't tie your shoe? When you can't tie your shoe, you can't put your shoes on. When you can't put your shoes on, you can't go walking. It's like a triple whammy. I'm like, God damn, how in the hell do fat people put their shoes on, tie their shoes, and go walk? When I finally got my shoes on my feet, I went to go try to take a walk, and I sprained my ankle. <laughs> my big old fat self nigga, I sprained my ankle trying to walk a mile, and then I'm looking like, how am I supposed to get home when I can't even walk? And so my big old fat self is hobbling down the road, trying to get back to the house after I walked maybe like a fourth of a mile. I'm exhausted. My ankle is screaming. And I get to the house, I just look in the mirror like, oh man, this can't be life. Being fat is one of the most uncomfortable things in the whole entire world. And so that brings me to the body positivity movement. Yeah. But that is related to the female rivalry theory of body positivity, right? That uh, if you can somehow manage to get to a drag few competitors other girls down, to yeah. eat their way out of your <laughs> horizontal competition league. <laughs> How in the world is it positive to be in pain? Every fat person in America, you know what hurts to be fat. You feel it all in the small of your back. You feel it all in your ankles. You can't breathe. You be sweating. Right now, it's winter time, and I got on a vest. You say, I'll be outside. It's cold as shit. It's 30 degrees outside. They say, hey, ain't you ain't you cold? I say, hell no. Nigga, I'm warm as shit. <laughs> if I put a jacket on right now, I'll be sweating. And can't nobody outside call me fat phobic. If you call me fat phobic, you telling me I'm afraid of myself. I ain't afraid of myself. I'm diabetes phobic. I'm afraid of catching diabetes, you hear me? <laughs> Shit. I got a question for every fat person in America. Do you get hungry in your sleep? Do you wake up and go eat a donut and go back to sleep? Do you wake up and go eat some Doritos and go back to sleep? We so fat, all we do. In our sleep, we think about food. While we awake, we think about food. Americans spend a lot of money trying to lose weight and a lot of time talking about it. We're spending $150 billion a year treating obesity-related uh, illnesses. Ain't nothing positive about being fat in America. Ain't nothing positive about struggling to put your shoes on. And so when we start to have honest conversations about reality, we can have a better experience. Like there's fat people, there's skinny people, there are men and there are women, and there's everything in between. Like if you 10 pounds to 100 pounds overweight, you fat. <laughs> we got feminine men, we got masculine women. You know, we, we got some girly men in America. But guess what, you still a man. You got a tallywhacker in a whole sack talking about, I'm a lady. Tell the truth and get some power. I look in the mirror and I'm like, oh my God, you're so handsome. You're so wonderful. You're so beautiful. I look in the mirror and I say, where's my meat? <laughs> I can't see past my navel. Ain't nothing attractive about that. Ain't nothing sexy about that. Fructose is the cause of the current epidemic. Robert Lustig at the University of California in San Francisco argues that the introduction in the 1970s of a low-cost sweetener called high-fructose corn syrup lowered the cost of fructose in general so that now it's showing up everywhere. I'm trying to hold myself accountable right now. Every time I eat some bullshit, I say, boy, you know you eat some bullshit. You shouldn't be eating those double cheeseburgers from mcdonald's with the basket of fries but the basket of fries be so delicious that that grease be so tasty you put some ketchup on top of the grease i'm a nasty fat motherfucker you hear me you put some ketchup on top of the grease you say oh my goodness this is so delicious it's not nutritious it's not beneficial it ain't helping me being the best person that i can be and so when i tell you that i'm 
I'm fighting with obesity and I'm fighting with addiction. I'm fighting with food addiction. I'm fighting with alcohol addiction. Uh, nigga, I'm fighting with social media addiction. <laughs> but I'm not going to get on this social media and tell you, be fat like me. I'm going to say, nigga, you need to be fat free. Don't be fat. Don't be around fat people. Don't date fat people because uh, the people that you have in your proximity is contagious. Being fat is contagious. Hang, if you're a fat woman or a fat man, hang around with the person of the opposite sex who loves to eat cookies. And I swear to goodness, you going to be eating some cookies, nigga. I love tacos and nachos and shit. You hang around with a person who eats tacos and nachos and you're going to be a taco eating motherfucker. We need to be honest about our experiences in America and especially how hard it is. Anybody who loves you, if they see that you struggling and being fat as hell and wobbling through the stove, they're going to say, hey, fat boy, let's go take a walk. And when they ask you to take a walk, that means they love you. And if you go take a walk and you sprain your ankle, then all of a sudden you got somebody to help your fat ass back to your car to get to the hospital and get a cast for your fat ass ankle. I believe in accountability. I believe in telling truth and the only way that we can have a more positive society is if we hold each other accountable for our behavior when you see me drinking too much i've been drinking too much i'm gonna listen to you say i hear you and then i'm gonna tell you i'm an alcoholic and i'm gonna pour another drink <laughs> if you tell me don't go to mcdonald's i'm gonna say i hear you and i'm gonna order my double cheeseburgers with my basket of fries and i'll put some ketchup on that motherfucking grease and i'm gonna have a wonderful time being fat until I make the personal decision to say, I don't want to be fat no more. And my proclamation right now is I don't want to be fat no more. And I do not know how I'm going to beat obesity. I haven't figured that out yet. I just know that uh, with AA, you have to admit that you have a problem. And so right now, hi, my name is Fat Man and I have a problem with food and alcohol. And I hope that me and you can work together to beat this addiction so we can be better people and be better for our families. What's up? The greatest American alive. 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 I don't fucking know. I, I had to record some motherfucker. I had to show up, bitch.